Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. So, start off with apologies for last week. Um, I usually am pretty good at planning for that and having having some videos ready to go. And uh, I, man, I missed the mark last week. So again, apologies. Um, but I got back in the shop, uh, or I got back to the house late yesterday afternoon, and the sun's not even up yet, and I'm in the shop this morning. So that's a good day. Next up, I'm gonna do this bandsaw jig. Now this was originally one that I tossed together for, for this saw, and a friend of mine asked me to build him one, and he just happens to have the same saw as I do. So, I'm gonna build me a little nicer one and give him my first attempt, and uh, yeah, so then he'll, he'll have one. Uh, there's really not a lot to it. There's a lot of videos out there. Um, I will have plans for it, but it's, it, it really is pretty easy to figure out how to toss this together fairly quickly. Um, my plans, uh, they, they have measurements on them for, for length and width. Just ignore those numbers and take those numbers from your bandsaw. Um, in fact, I don't even think those numbers are correct for my bandsaw. We just, we had to put some numbers in there to, to make it all look right. So, uh, consists of three pieces. There's a, a lower layer and I use Baltic birch, um, but really any stable material will work down there. And then the top is in three pieces, you know, allowing for the curve and of course the slide piece here. Um, and that's on a, like a little sliding dovetail. Um, if you look on the bottom, I've got a piece of HDPE in here for a runner. I have a backstop and on my saw, this just clamps to the fence when it's in use. So that makes life easy. Um, but that's something that's going to be important for your bandsaw as a way to uh, secure it in place when it's in use. And then of course I got this uh, little nut and on the inside, let's see if we can show you here. You see there's a threaded insert right there that the nut goes through. And that's really all there is to this. So let me get over to the table saw and cut up some, I'm, I'm gonna go back and use plywood again because uh, it's a good stable material. I might just actually sand it and put a finish on it this time. But anyways, let me cut up some plywood and I'll show you what we're doing. Okay, so I've measured out my center and, and left me a little mark there. And I'm just drawing a, a light reference line on here just so I know where I'm at when I start making my cut at the bandsaw. Ultimately, this kerf cut that we're gonna put in this one will be somewhere in around here, but it really depends on what you have on your bandsaw for the fence and what you need for the stop because you want this to come all the way in and we'll, we'll screw a stop on the bottom that, that hits the fence on the bandsaw. So that'll make sense in just a second. Um, I just wanted a rough reference guide in here so I could see where I was at and how far in I needed to go. I think on my saw I need to go just a smidgen over center, um, but now I at least have that ballpark idea. Okay, so I'm set up at the bandsaw and I'm going to make the first kerf cut on here. Now I like to use the fence over here to keep everything nice and straight. Um, I've cut all my plywood straight, so that'll just help me keep it that way. Um, I'm going to cut to somewhere around this center line. I'm going to try to pay a little bit of attention to where I'm at on the, where the fence is going to go on here in relation to my fence here, but we can always adjust that later. Okay, 
Now while I've got it at this point, uh, I've prepared my piece of HDPE, but like I said, hardwood would work just as well. And I want to get the runner on this, which will help keep this square, allow me to get the fence out of the way to finish this up. Uh, I've pre-drilled and countersunk these. So all I'm going to do is set that in the runner and super glue it on, put a little weight on here for a minute, uh, and then I'll come back and attach screws to my base here. Um, also, I've added a couple of pennies in the track to help this rise up just a little bit above the bed of my table. So that's what's next. Okay, if you're using HDPE like I am, when you put these screws in, don't over tighten them or it will actually squeeze out and it'll be difficult to run in your miter slot. Okay, before I put this back on the saw, uh, I just cut this little two and a half inch strip of plywood that was left over from this. And I'm just gonna mark the location where this runner is. So I can cut a little notch out here in the bottom so that this will all sit down on here flush and then I'm going to go ahead and attach the fence. Okay, so now with the fence installed, my cut didn't go quite far enough, but now I know exactly where it needs to go. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start the saw up and push, the, push it in until I reach the fence. Okay, so now with the sled all the way in, I can go ahead and find the new front of the blade, which is where my pin needs to go on the adjustable slide. So I'll get that marked now. And now we can start building up the second layer of this base and, and getting this thing put together. Uh, first cut up will be this inside um, and I will cut it, you know, at this width. And if it's off a little bit, it's not a big deal. This, this whole section over here is only there to support the workpiece. So if there's a little gap or, or whatever, it's just not a big deal. Okay, so I've got a couple of quick clamps back here on my fence just to hold everything stable and cut this piece of plywood to, to fit. All I'm gonna do is, is uh, glue that on and I'll add a couple of pin nails in it just until the glue dries. The glue is gonna do the bulk of the work. Not that there's a lot of work on this side anyway. Drop a couple of brads in it. Okay, so I hope this shows up okay on camera. All I did was I measured out roughly an inch and a half from the blade and I struck a couple of lines there. And those are going to be where I want the top edges or the long edges of this sliding dovetail to be. So I'm gonna just go ahead and cut these plywood pieces at the table saw, setting the blade to 45, and we'll get them set in here. Uh, the offcut piece from this is actually what's going to slide in here, so I want to keep that piece uh, when I cut this at the table saw. Okay, so now with the pieces cut, I've got a couple of pieces of paper just folded in half and set in here. I like to use that as a gap to ensure that this, this piece slides freely in there. So all I'm going to do is, is lift these pieces off and get some glue on them. I'm going to pin nail them down just like I did on the other half. And then we'll come back and, and work on the device to, to clamp this in place.
Okay, so next up I gotta locate for the hole to put the threaded insert in. This is just a quarter 20 threaded insert. And that fits a 7 8 Forstner bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and countersink that hole. Okay, so there you go guys. Pretty quick, down and dirty, simple jig. Uh, I'll still put a coat of finish on this. Um, some wax at least, just to, to keep things sliding nice. Now I used a, a small nail up here and cut it off just so I could have a smaller hole uh, in the bottom of my piece. But you could certainly use a dowel here or you know whatever you wanted. Uh, the threaded insert and the, the quarter 20 knob, uh, other than you know, the plywood was really the only expense to build this, but it allows me to cut nice circles, uh, just about any size that I need. I literally just slide this in and out to uh, determine what size circle I'm going to cut, and uh, away you go. So, I hope you guys got something out of that. If you have any questions, throw them down in the comments block. I'll be happy to answer them. And until next time, take care, guys. <laughs>